How's it going, my comic shit army? We're here today with Jim Whiting. How you doing, Jim? Good. Cody, how are you? I'm doing good. Yeah, so tell us all of the books that you created. It was a long list. <laughs> yeah, it was a long list. So I uh, created uh, Margo Intergalactic Trash Collector, which I have four issues out. I'll flash those by. Uh, I worked with a couple of... Uh, comic notables on this joe staten uh, i did an issue with a cover by joe sinette uh there's the first issue uh available was first available on kickstarter and then we i have a started working with fanico on a distribution deal and um so i got my margo book out there and then i started working with marcelo Trom on infinite punishment and published his book there too so we did three issues of that uh Infinite Punishment, which is here's the infamous number two, which is almost impossible to find. And the third issue, unfortunately, I was in Baltimore and Marcelo had a heart attack and died while he was working on the third issue. And so he passed away and he had almost finished the third issue. And so I had talked to his wife about finishing the book because he had it all the breakdowns and the pencils. So we put it out just with the pencils because she didn't want anybody else touching his artwork. And then later we got together and we did a little tribute book of, of his artwork uh, called Bad Girls. So she supplied his portfolio and uh, we did a hardcover for that too. We did a soft cover and hardcover. And so it covers his career and his series. And we raised money on Kickstarter for his family. He's got a five-year-old son, uh, probably six now, and his wife and his death was sudden. So uh, the Unfortunately, been a lot of interest in the book, and uh, he's not around to see it. And things are things are really happening with the stuff. So, good friend of mine, I loved working with him. I met him on Facebook, and we just clicked right away and worked together for about four or five years. Oh wow! Where can people pick up all of the books that you've made? Do you have a website? I do. It's uh, whitingstudio.com. And uh, some of the books are available through comic book stores, although Diamond's not the easiest to get books through. They always tell you they're sold out when, you know, there's plenty of books around. But, uh, you know, so we did uh, another book, a uh, portfolio book of uh, different artists. You can see it has my work and a couple of other artists I like to work with. Uh, Mar has Marcello's book, too. So we did a, a book called Dark Arts, which was more of an art portfolio book. And we put that out. And then I also worked on uh, Basil Gogos' book, which uh, he was a big hero of mine. I love uh, monster movie magazines from the 50s and 60s. I'm a big collector of that. And so I was a big fan of his. I met him a couple of times. And so I got to do this hardcover with his estate and uh, a, lot of, a lot of nice monster art, you know. And so we put out, this is the deluxe hardcover, but we also put out a soft cover too. And so this basically shows how he built because he worked a very particular procedure with overlays and tissue papers and he's overlaying the artwork layer by layer until he got to the finished product which was fun to do um working with uh, i mean such a talented artist you know so i've been lucky to work with a lot of good artists and also doing my own books as i said margo intergalactic trash collector i got four issues out of that so i'm writing and uh, drawing that. And so I publish my own books under Whiting Studio imprint, and then I distribute through Fanico. I also do design work for Fanico too. So kind of got the, the, the full glass of stuff going on. Oh yeah, do you do um, art commissions? I do art commissions uh, occasionally. Uh, depends on what it is and who it is, you know, but uh, I, um, I, I do. I haven't done one in a while because a lot of times you get asked to do a lot of stuff that's crazy and you're like, oh, damn, I'd rather be home drawing my comic book than drawing this picture of uh, Wolverine r ripping into the Hulk, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know we, you have a book on Kickstarter now. I do. It's called Shriek. It's an anthology. And uh, I'll show you some of the covers. I got some mock ups here. This is by Rick Rawling. He's out of England. He's a good friend of mine. We worked together in the 90s. That tells you how old I am. I've been doing comics since the 90s, right? Um, so 
Let's see. We got a couple of covers here. I'll show you. It's live on Kickstarter now. There's a vampire cover. These prints are not very good. They're from uh, the printer's a little older, but. And then I have a new series called Lady Dracula, which I'm introducing here. So this anthology is kind of for artists who are starting out with a new series. And what we're doing is we're doing collections of each of the series. And then later on, we hope to collect them into a regular book and put them out as a a regular series. So the Lady Dracula, I have maybe uh, 15 pages in this book, but I have 32 pages done, ready to go as its own book. So it's kind of fun. It kind of brings the Dracula mythos into the future where his daughter's living in an up trailer upstate New York with a bunch of vampire tweakers. And uh, there's, she's being hunted down by Nosferatu's and Dracula's dead. And she's got dad issues. And like he left her with this big mess and she's got to deal with it. And it kind of brings in all the old universal monsters, but they're all old and fucked up and messed up. And so she's got to go find them again and, and wage this war against the Nosferatu. So it's fun, you know? I like that. That's very original. Oh, yeah. I like doing original stuff. I, I've got a bunch of ideas. I'm working with a bunch of different artists and hoping to get this stuff out. And the Shriek book is a really good format for me to launch some of the stuff that I'm doing. You know, I'm working with uh, a couple of different artists. I'm working with um, Matt Belskis. He's got a series about the suicide uh, rain, uh, suicide forest in Japan. And then I'm working with uh, um, Nate Osborne, who's doing a of the vampire book he wants to do a book and we're possibly doing a game so we're we're writing a game for this vampire series it's just really nice stuff you know very photo realistic uh and so he's rewriting this vampire mythos so we're we're exploring that and and he wants hopefully i'll be publishing it under the whiting studios uh brand later in the year and you said game like a board game card game Card game. We're looking at doing a card game. We're looking for writers right now to help us put this together because he's got the whole mythos and the whole universe built, but he wants to incorporate it into a bunch of books uh, that would, would further the card game and come with the card game. So the books are called, the first book is called Keys, and it's the key to the vampire universe. Mm. All right. If if anybody has, a, are you do you want them to submit their stories or do you want people to contact you? Then you give them a. Well, they can contact me, and I'll give them the the information. And we're looking to for someone to write the game for us. Okay. And so hopefully we can uh, get the game written, and then we'll probably do a Kickstarter and produce the game and the book at the same time. That's so they accompany each other. It's something new, so I'm exploring it. I haven't done that. I've been mostly working in publishing. Uh, you know, I work in, I've been working in publishing for many, many years. Uh, I did horror magazines back in the 80s, and uh, I worked uh, comics in the 90s. So, yeah, show my age here. <laughs> um, I guess, what's a common mistake that you see new publishers make? New publishers? I I think a lot of publishers are really trying to get product out as fast as possible. And I don't think the product always is up to snuff, you know, that I think that, um, you know, one of the things when I went back into publishing is I, I want to set a certain bar for myself. Of like, OK, I've done crappy comics. I don't ever want to do crappy comics again, you know. And it, and since I'm totally responsible, I, I have total control over the quality and even with my own work, I, you know, I started working with an editor because there was a lot of stuff that I see that needs improvement. And, uh, you know, I can't do everything myself. So if I, I bring in someone else with a different experience and I think a lot of these comics that come out today, they're great. And there's a lot of a lot of talent. It's, you know, independent comics are a hotbed for tomorrow's superstars and, and stories. But I think there's also room for growth in like getting an editor, how to do it right, how to how to. Uh, move in certain directions. And a lot of guys will put out books uh, just to pump up numbers and get the most books out. And it's not always the best book that it could be, you know? Yeah. All right. Um, Are you taking book submissions also? I am. I'm very particular because I only do what I want. You know, <laughs> I think if 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 it's, a, if it's somebody I like and I get along with them and they're and they've got some talent and they got some good ideas, then I'm willing to work with them, you know, and get those books out there. 
Um, but I'm not actively like trying to pump up numbers and get a bunch of books out there and become the next uh, image or, or even scout or anybody, you know, I just want to do my comics. I just want to do cool art books and uh, publish the stuff I like. And uh, I think at the end of the day, that's about all I can really do. Yeah. Uh, I see that you're, that you draw traditional. I see your artboard. I, behind you. I do. I do both. I do both. I've, uh, I really like doing bigger art and I also, uh, I really dig the digital. I mean, I started out coloring my own work digital. And, uh, so sometimes I do the coloring myself. I did the coloring on this, uh, artwork Rick did. And so I, um, did the coloring on my, uh, Lady Dracula series. And a lot of that's going to be red, white, and gray tone so it's very uh i'm trying to go for a, like a movie feel mm -hmm. but sometimes it's fun to uh get somebody who's digital comes in and colors your work and gives it a whole different feel i've done that with the margo intergalactic trash collector series um i did a special called uh space vampire which has uh, a story by as a matter of fact by marcelo trom that we wrote together i wrote for him and he did it and it's in here so it's a special it's two short stories and so I hired um, a fellow to do the cover coming on this and it came out really good. I was really happy with it. Um, and he went on to do the coloring on um, the shield book for uh, that Archie just put out with, um, although he, I don't think he got credit. I think uh, what's his name there from image took the, <laughs> all the credit because yeah. <laughs> he was posting but he's, he's, he's a really hot colorist and, and he was up and coming. And I like working with guys who are up and coming and, and, and looking to get their stuff out. So I, over the years, I've worked with a lot of young artists who were starting out and uh, going on to do bigger stuff. And, you know, being that stepping stone, I like doing that. I think it's good. Uh, you know, it's good for me as an artist to deal with other artists and, and their techniques and also to help other artists get their stuff out. And that's kind of what the Shriek book is about. Uh, some of the artists is first time published. Uh, there's N N Niora Mora from uh, Brazil, and this is her first story. And she does an anime style that's more of a mystery slasher murder uh, thing. So the book has a lot of different styles and techniques and also a lot of artists from different uh, backgrounds. OK, so each issue is going to be different or right? Well, each issue will continue the story. OK. And uh, some of the some of them are one shot stories, but there will be probably be about three stories that will continue. I would imagine uh, my Lady Dracula. I've already got the second story done. Mora's um, <clears throat> um, her story is called Circus of Fear. It's about a, a serial killer who kills people in a campground. And uh, also Nate's uh, Nate Osborne's uh, Necros, the vampire um, series, will continue the beginnings of the book. Okay. And so, so for now, that's yeah. And also, I have a, a story written with one of the artists about a, uh, a sort of a Hulk-like character that is uh, is uh, bipolar. And when he goes off his bipolar medicine, he goes crazy and rips everything up and smashes everything. So that's kind of fun. So I'm working on that too with uh, Matt Belskis. So a lot of different stuff going on. All right. And what I guess, what common mistake do you see new artists ma that make? Well, I, I make this mistake myself, too. Um, I, I love my own artwork when I look at it. I'm really into it. But then when I work with an editor, you come in and say, this isn't working. And I'll be like, no, you're wrong. This is great. I love my artwork. No. And he'll point it out. And, if, and I got to step back and I got to look at it. And you're right. It doesn't work. It doesn't sequentially work. And, you know, there's things that touch each other that shouldn't touch each other. Uh, directions of panels. Um, so the, the storytelling in sequential is a lot different than doing, say, pinups, because you really are sacrificed to the story. And, you know, as an artist, I want to make every panel really good. But sometimes you just got to give the ghost up and, and make the story progress longer. And so a lot of a lot of artists make that mistake. It's like every panel is going to look like a pinup and that can't happen. You know, you really have to sacrifice yourself to the story that's where editor comes in not just to fix typos but to tell you hey your story's not working this way and so that's been a 
that's been a big thing for me to swallow. And I see that in a lot of books too, especially with newer books and artists who are starting out. And, you know, we're all there. We all learn. And eventually if they start working with an editor or start working with a publisher, they'll see some of that. Well, you know, when it comes back, um, you got to eat a lot of your own ego sometimes with this stuff, you know, putting a book out there and you, you think the cover's great and I think it's great. And then the numbers come back and they're like, eh, and you're like, damn, man, that was my best cover. And then you just got to swallow it and come back and do it again, you know? All right. Are you currently doing any book signings or have any in the future that you're going to attend? The fall is going to be big for me. I'm going to do Baltimore. I go down with a couple of friends. I'm set up in Baltimore. And then Heroes is doing a mini con that seems to be growing in November. So I'll be down there for that. And then I'm in the Albany area right outside New York City. So there's a lot of artists and a lot of conventions in this area. So a lot of the artists I actually work with live in this area because the old days Marvel was in New York and a lot of artists live in between New York and, and where I live in upstate New York. And so there's a bunch of conventions up here. A lot of the artists uh, who worked for Marvel for years or worked independent, excuse me, worked independent comics, live up in this area. So we all get together at conventions and hang out. So there's a, two conventions in the fall here, uh, Baltimore. Uh, I did apply for New York for the sixth year in a row. New York Comic Con <laughs> turned me down. Every year they turn me down. <laughs> Did they tell you why they turned you down? Uh, they, they, they give the table to people who they think can, can uh, I don't know, that, you know, apparently... They, they they give me some pat and excuse and I'm just like, you know what? I give up. I'm done. You know, I, I, I spent six years trying. It cost five hundred dollars to go. I, I'm done. I can't keep applying the headache of it. So I'll just look for other conventions to do, you know. But do you get the five hundred dollars back or the, they only? Take no, no, you don't. They they, they don't, you have to. Yeah. Only if they accept you. OK. So it's like, you know. Certain people get in, I know, you know, and it's, it's, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to trash them, but I'm tired of wasting energy to five years in a row to get in. I mean, I went to San Diego back in the nineties and that was big then. I mean, I can't even imagine what it's like now, you know? So I've, I've gone to New York, walk the floor, say hello to my friends at the artist tables. And uh, maybe I'll do that this year. I'm not so sure. But You thought about ever making your own Comic-Con? No, I, you know, I have friends who do it and, you know, it's so much work that I, I look at the stress level of dealing with all these artists and all these writers and all these needs and, and, and hotels and all these other things. And I, I go, wow, man, I just want to make comics. <laughs> you know? yeah. and, and, and I only have this amount of time and you know how it is. You're a dad. So your time is going, especially if you have kids. I mean, yeah. I, my daughter's raised now and I've got a lot more time, but when, when my daughter was younger, my time was about this big, you know? And so fitting in, I, you know, my eyes are this big of all the stuff I want to do, but the reality of how much time I have is this big. And so I need to focus on what I do best. I think I, I create comics best and that's what I want to do. So, you know, even the publishing is, is a lot of work too. layout, uh, lettering, coloring, you know, um, but I, I enjoy it all, you know, and it's it's good. And I'm always trying to learn more and, and work with new people and do new stuff. All right. Yeah, we definitely love your art. I like the thick black lines that you do. And just it's it would be great for tattoos. Well, I got a whole package of these books coming out to you, man. I, I'm sorry I didn't get to you them before the show. I'll send you the copies of these and uh, you'll have them. I don't know if you have them already. But um, I know you got the finally got the infamous number two. Yeah. What well, really quick before we go? Why? Why is that one so infamous? Like, why is it so hard to find? Well, as I told you, I was at Baltimore two years ago, and uh, I was talking to Marcelo, and I got a message online that he had died, and he was right in the middle of working on number three, and number two had just came on sale. I was at Baltimore, and I introduced it there at the table that hadn't even gone into stores yet. So I had already ordered the book. And so the numbers just exploded with number two. And I don't know whether it had to do it later. It had to do with probably his passing. But in the beginning, number one just did so well. Number two took off and there, there was no number twos to print. So we just sold out. Diamond reordered everything I had left. 
And I kept a couple for uh, his family and, and some of his friends, but that was about it. And so what I want to do, um, uh, I'm hoping to collect it with number two, and I want to ink number three so that it's completed, so it's not just the pencils. Because there's a lot of artists he worked with who were friends of his, did pinups and stuff of his characters. And so we're going to include that into a collected version, I'm hoping, later this year. So we'll do a collected Infinite Punishment with number two and uh, a bunch of these pinups. Because, uh, you know, he had a lot of friends who were artists who did stuff for his book. All right. Well, is there anything you want to say before we go? Uh, Shriek, go to Kickstarter, support it. Support artists, support indie comics, and uh, support your show because it's important. It's important that the uh, word get out there about these independent comics and people know about them. And uh, you're doing good work. And uh, I, I'm, I'm there 100%, man. Thank you so much. What? You mean you haven't subscribed to Comic Chat Authority? Oh, come on. Subscribe already. What are you waiting for? It's no big deal. Like, man, don't forget to tell him to hit that like button. Yeah, yeah, that too. Just subscribe.